Greetings, Commanders! Welcome to Crash Landing, the Elite Dangerous Community Show. Commander Crash here, and it's lovely to see you all in the chat. Look at all the names they got. Fiery Toad, Ian, XLG, Icefire, JMS, Made by Rihanna, Prime 9, greetings, Rormer, Tamruhak, the Hug Monster, and Tolgraf are in the chat with us right now. It's lovely to see you all. It's Friday, isn't it great? Ah, what a long and crazy week I have had. Ah, and... <laughs> That sums up my week. That's how I feel. <laughs> After everything I've been through this week, yep, that sums up my week. Let's get back into that. <laughs> what a great start. Mm. How are you all doing? Hopefully your week hasn't been quite as chaotic as mine. Uh, I've been trying to cram everything in the kitchen sink in this week. I've had a couple of late nights, some of them entirely self-inflicted. Yes, if you didn't notice, uh, yes, it wasn't your, it wasn't, pro no, definitely not Prime 9. I blame Revian. Where's Revian? This is full. <laughs> um, yes, as you might be able to tell by my dashing little t-shirt I have on here, this week we saw the release of Planet Coaster Beta, and it has been absolutely nuts. Oh my goodness. Play Planet Coaster and take a, yes, Toad, yes, um, I, I've been playing that constantly. It's amazing fun. Um, what colour are my lasers tonight? Well, let's find out. Ice fire. Let's get out into the void and I can have a play around with my new pew pew lasers. Probably better at playing it goes to the net. Thanks, Snarls. Greetings, buddy. Um, no, I'm I'm terrible at Planet Coaster as well. Actually, it's fantastic. You see some of the really really awesome community creations out there for Planet Coaster. I just cannot believe the awesome creativity of some people out there. It, it's absolutely behold. One one of my one of the things I saw recently, actually, I, I haven't got the link to share with you, but someone has recreated the entire Planet Coaster E3 launch trailer from last year with in-game assets and synced up to the music. Uh, Rudy uh, is a fantastic featured creator. Some fantastic, fantastic stuff. Really, really awesome. Paul Archer, greetings. Right, let's head out into the void and play with my pew pews. I've got to get out of range of... Uh, <coughs> Mr. C make a coaster map on the alien ruins for our SRVs. Good. Yeah, yeah. I was thinking I would love to make like a uh, Elite Dangerous themed theme, like roller coaster park and all that kind of... It, that would be really cool. I'd love to do something like that. Snozzy. Your dream coaster is two side by side. Yeah, dueling coasters, side by side racing coasters are pretty popular um, in a lot of theme parks. Actually, there are, there are quite a few in the world. One of the, the most recent one that is the Joker uh, in one of the theme parks in the states. Uh, that's a kind of wooden hybrid of the green and, and purple coaster next to each other. Uh, fantastic one. Blind as a bat. Greetings, Commander. Nice to see you there. Right, let us. I need to uh, get to the Glise 3299 system, which is relatively close. There it is. Glise 3299. And then we can try out these new Pew Pew lasers, which we will get to in the chat in a minute, which I imagine a lot of you have already seen. Yes, this is something which was uh, hinted at in the 2.2 beta, uh, and it's finally been unlocked on the store. So, so there's a lot of things that have to go on behind the scenes. I mean, like, like I said, the uh, first layer is it kind of puts into the game functionality, and then it gets linked up to your to your account of what you can have, and then it gets uh, available in, in the store as something you can buy. So all that synchronization has to happen for you. Now. But it is now available in the store, yes. Uh, weapon color modifications. So yeah, so that uh, gives you a it's a single color modification for your whole ship. So uh, you choose the the color you want for all of your weapons on the ship, and they get a a huge shift on there. Uh, the hope was yes, a, a a certain other roller coaster game is recent the day before. It's a common marketing strategy to do that kind of thing to ride on the success of a competitor and and hope that people don't notice they're purchasing uh, the game that they think they're getting and buy yours instead. It's a common thing. In fact, there is actually another one, uh, Theme Park Studio as well, which is launching on the 25th of November. Again, uh, 
that's been in early access for a long, long period of time, and that one's just kind of, uh, again, tacking on to that release. Yet. These, these, both of these other games have not had a release date for about three years, and then suddenly when Planet Coaster announces its release date, uh, they suddenly get release dates on the same time. <laughs> Oh, Snorz, you mean Dual Coaster is in-game? Yes, um, I think at the moment that you don't have station synchronization in Planet Coaster, but it's something that uh, Roller Coaster Tycoon 3 got in one of the, the patches after it, it was released, um, which allowed you to kind of have two separate independent stations that would sync together and they would go up the lift hill uh, in unison. So I think it's something that will come in, a, in an update at some point. Mm -mm. Oh, fair days. Okay, uh, the Steam. If Steam's paid. Oh, there we go. Lots of updates. If you played it for less than two hours, a ref you get a refund on Steam. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. People can see uh, exactly what the game is like and make up their own mind about uh, whether or not it's worth the money. Right. Let me. Uh, where's my? Oh, oh, oh! I got sexy purple lasers. Yes, I've gone for purple. I've gone for purple pew pews. Look at that. Ooh. Am I going to burn out my weapon capacitor before I can see the pew-pews? Oh, look at the glow on that. Look at that. You know what we're going to have to do now? I mean, it, it's a given. Loads of commanders in an instance together with all different colours. And we can do a New Year's celebration with all the different lasers and things going in different directions. Let me try the other uh, weapon, actually. Oh, yes, look at that. The multi-cannons get, get some tracer... Uh, hints as well, let me hear. <laughs> it's too much fun. It's a, it's a silly little thing, I love it. Uh, okay, right to the success of a competitor, that's why you think Microsoft skipped 9 and went straight to 10 to compete with Mac OS. Actually, I heard the, the reason behind the whole Windows 10 thing was because some old legacy applications um, would look for the first part of a version string in, in the Windows thing and see Win 9 and assume that they were running on like Windows 95 or 98 and it would cause all kinds of archaic compatibility issues. Oh, look at that! I like that. Bit of a chemical manipulation to the uh, gunpowder used in the multi cannon rounds. I like that. That's nice. Da -da 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 -da. I'll happily burn up millions of credits on those ones. <laughs> <laughs> is the latest luge letter on Yes, there you go. Ian's put it up in the chat. There's the uh, newsletter link for you there. Newsletter 150. And uh, as I've had a little bit of a pew pew. Oops. Let's get out of range. We will get straight onto the newsletter very shortly. Oh. Oh, deploy. There we go. Uh, no, I want to fly it. It's my fighter. Give me my fighter. I want to play. Simmer, greetings, commander. Death by pinkness. Yes, I love the pink pew pews. You got our pink pew pew. Look at that. <laughs> Look at that. Bright green pew pews. <laughs> Brilliant. Love it. Request docking. Ready for retrieval, Commander. Approach when ready. Telepresence transfer successful. I have the ship. Come on. Come on, come back to ship. I can't be bothered to dock. Do it for me. Lazy, lazy, lazy fighter. Huggy oh, Monster, yes, I've got all the weapon colours. There's seven weapon colours available at the moment. Um, it would be nice if there was a, like a five pound for all seven in a pack Stay option in yeah, the store, sure. but uh, at the moment I've just got the uh, uh, the seven separate ones on there. Uh, is it right you can disable the weapon colours for everyone and for yourself? Um... If it is, it's not an option I've seen. Where have you seen that, uh, Andy? I have not seen that option listed anywhere. No, it doesn't appear to be an option on there, so I haven't seen it. Uh, Shadow, you have the color coded lasers green for your ship, and blue for your Imperial ships, and ah, purple for the Federation ones. Oh, nice. Oh, yes, I'm going to have to try that on uh, some of my ships now. Steve and Asher, greetings, Commander. Not kilted up yet, then. Oh, hopefully this time next week. Next, it's, It might be a little bit chilly, though. The weather has taken a turn, so uh, you might be regretting that decision. Uh, there's a key command for it, is there? 
that's uh, uh, turn that screen I have, honestly I have not looked I have not looked for that one under miscellaneous no doubt uh, shiblets weapon color toggles weapon color customization okay let's pick oh this engine color customization which is coming coming soon as well that's a, that's the next thing to uh, I wonder if I can chuck it on there we go nothing on that key is it oh there we go if I yes so it works between fires so you can't <laughs> oh, we can. Fiery Toad, Fiery Toad, there has to be some kind of voice attack script you can do to set up some flashing colour coordination thing. That would be really cool. We we have to have words, my friend. Dirk D! Greetings, Commanders! Uh, disable turns on your own models, one of it doesn't affect what you see in other people, but it does affect what people see on you. Ah, excellent. So it is a ship, a uh, per ship based option you can put them on. Can you get the ultra violent and ultra dead colors? <laughs> Engine color mods, yes, that will be coming soon. Yes, on that note, let's jump onto the newsletter, actually. Newsletter 150. As it says, what an achievement. That is a large number to get to. 150. It's almost as many as there is episodes of Crash Landing. Yes, we're talking uh, so 166 episodes of Crash Landing so far because I did start streaming before the newsletter existed even. How crazy is that? Um, yes, well, I am crazy. Uh, was it when, when are the HUD colours coming? See, I mean, that's the problem, Hug Monster, is if the HUD colors came in now and they were like a pay for option, people would go nuts. Everyone expects the HUD colors to be completely free now, and that's a little bit of a tricky thing. So, how do you kind of fit in the cost of development of giving an interface to allow that to happen and make it a free option? Well, okay, if everyone buys some weapon color modifications and it covers the cost of adding in the, the UI for the HUD colors is for free, then great, brilliant. Um, Prime 9, you want Z buffer laces just to screw with things. <laughs> it completely messes with your perception of depth. It's like fires behind the asteroid in front of you. It just messes with people's Z buffers so they can't see things. It's like a uh, um, stealthy black lasers. Yeah, Flint, yeah. <laughs> It's like the opposite of a, whirl, whirl, uh, a wall hack. Uh, other players wouldn't be able to see through things because you'd blank out their Z-buffer and be like, what the hell? <laughs> Roger, like those crazy, crazy people. Um, yes, so, uh, we, well, we've been talking about the, uh, the colours, so let's jump on. There is a really important thing going on at the moment, as you probably would have seen on the forum, Colonia is expanding. Yes, the Colonia Council are starting an initiative to uh, expand the factions we're out in that area. Um, obviously at the moment there's only this starport and a couple of small land-based starports in a few areas uh, on the way out there. But uh, in order to start populating more, we're going to need some more factions out there. So there's an initiative starting, uh, and to give you the uh, uh, the TLDR on it, you can uh, follow the link in the newsletter on here, uh, and you can get yourself set up as a faction. You now they are taking uh, all of your. F well, let's let's go through the uh, let's go through the thing on here, and I'll show you how it works. You fill out the application. Really, really simple on here. Um, there you go. It's that simple. Put your faction name in, your commander name, and your email address so uh, front you can get in contact with you and uh, and set that up. It's that simple. Do that. It, do, it's, it has to be a new faction, I believe, um, but we will be getting uh, 10 factions added in initially out in Col Colonia, uh, and then three every month after that. So that begins on December the 1st. Now the reason for the for the limitation on the number of factions is, and I know this very well because I, I know the poor fellow has to uh, fill in all of the necessary work that goes in behind the scenes to fill in the faction details and stuff like that. Um, it is a lot of uh, manual work to get all that set up, get everything in sync on all of the systems uh, and get the factions in. So uh, they're taking all of your suggestions first, get on that forum, just put crazy suggestions in there if you want, uh, and get uh, uh, get your faction registered for the Colonia Initiative, which is uh, starting December the 1st. So get out there and do that. It's 
really, really awesome. I love the fact that it's being supported by Frontier as a, this player-led initiative to, uh, uh, to get out there and expand uh, in that area. I think it's really, really cool, I must admit. Right, let's check my mission. I've got a couple of missions I really have to uh, finish off as soon as possible. So the black box solid. Glise C3A. I've got some hefty deadlines on some of these now. But this one... Specialized legacy firmware, that's a 15 hour deadline. I think I can get most of these done in time. Question is, what is the closest one? We've got C3, C3A, C4, and they're all off in the over 31,000 light seconds away. Not quite as bad as Hutton Orbital, but uh, it's going to take a while. Hug monster, yeah, exactly. That's that's the thing. There, they will have to be a, a free uh, in-game option. Now that there's a, there's a workaround to do it. Uh, right, <laughs> you're trolling your own team. There, faction has no name or brace unlocalized, just to try and screw with the string parsing, aren't you? Yeah, yeah. That's the sort of thing. I, that's 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 the old uh, tester meme, isn't it? The uh, T-shirt. The tester goes into a uh, tester. Sorry. Test engineer walks into a bar, orders one beer, orders zero beers, orders null beers, or <laughs> orders Bob beers. <laughs> uh, what's mapped in there is uh, what's that? Winter. How long have we got until winter hits? Exactly fourteen squeebles. Prime nine confirms that. You heard it here first, folks. Fourteen squeebles. That's not long. That sounds like something from Rick and Morty, doesn't it? Oh, I'd say it's about 14 squeals. <laughs> but yeah, the uh, the HUD colors would definitely need to be a, a free option there. But again, it's something, you know, it, it's a lot of work to get that in it, it, as a workable option, not only to make it a, uh, a menu a, a option which can, can show up, it takes a considerable amount of work to do all of the strings and the and the, and the back end sync uh, of, of all of the code and everything to make that work, but also getting rid of the uh, the little glitch you have here, where uh, pictures are skewed on the on the same hue matrix and need to be uh, effectively left alone, um, that's a problem in itself, which needs to be sorted out. All of these things, I mean, it's it's not a trivial amount of effort to do. I mean, people just look at it and think, oh, it's just changing the XML. No, it's to link up that back end and make it so it's not an XML thing and it's a nice, friendly user interface and it doesn't screw around with the game. That's quite a bit of work, so it needs to be done. The Hugman said, yes, I do have a toy pan on board just to play around with. Um, hopefully I won't get too decimated in these missions I have stacked up, because I have quite a few of them to get on with. Fingers crossed. Uh, I've also got to go cash in this. Uh, this was a an interesting little CG, which is kind of wishing... Uh, oh, no, not this one. Sorry, that's the next one. Uh, get into this one. Uh, kind of wondering whether or not I should have taken part in this one. <laughs> Oops. Naughty crash. Um... Yeah, this was to deliver this rare uh, Toxangivirus side, which is a, a genetically engineered, or like an engineered uh, pesticide, which was from a, a rare thing. Now, that was the, the secret community goal that was launched on uh, uh, November the 5th, Bonfire Night last week, um, which was hidden in the Eli system, E L L I. Uh, so it doesn't actually show up on the Galaxy Map. That was a nice new feature, which kind of snuck into 2.2 is the fact that uh, we know that we can see uh, community go uh, community goal icons on the galaxy map as the uh, little yellow star icons as such. Um, but yeah, as a nice little hidden feature which was snuck into 2.2 is that special community goals can be uh, hidden away. So you see in the Eli system there, it didn't actually show up on the galaxy map, so you had to know where to go to look. Once you got into that system, it showed up as, a, as an available community goal on it. Shan, you're on NPC number 63. <laughs> the first 62 wanted too much money, so you fired them. Yeah, they, um, I have noticed that actually. That seems to be the, the best way to use the, the crew members, is you just use them when you need them and then get rid of them, actually. They, they take so much money. I haven't successfully trained anyone past, uh, like I think, competent at the moment, because they just... 
They just want so much money for what they do. <laughs> Probably not. Yes, yes. You, you're burning day. Yes, BS producing brain shells are shut down for the weekend. Yes, I know how you feel, mate. I've had a long week dealing with people as well, so I'm, I'm on a go slow today. Sparrow Black, greetings, Commander. Nice to see you there, buddy. <laughs> Mill Stone Barn there. Rest assured, since the election result, reducing orange has inc increased in priority for FTEF and the rest of the world. Hey, we want to say orange is the new black. There's been some fantastic tweets going out this this week. Hey, it had to go one way or the other, didn't it? It was a case of pick your poison for the, for the uh, the US, and uh, neither candidate were particularly fabulous. All I can say is uh, Michelle Obama, 2020. <laughs> Hopefully, she can clean up the mess, which is inevitably going to come in the next four years. Uh, yeah, it's uh, not that I've got anything against the guy. It's like I just don't see him being particularly useful in is engaging his policies of the US, uh, whatever those policies are. <laughs> Mate, make America great again, however he proposes to do that. I've yet to see a solid action plan when I do that. It sounds a lot like my... Uh, it's, it's a typical business speak, this is. It's all, it's all talk and no, uh, uh, no actual plan on how they're going to achieve it. They leave the plan up to the minions. I mean, you know, you're just you're just the front man that makes the the big speech about yeah, we're going to be doing this, we're going to be doing that. How are we going to be doing that? Well, that's up to the engineers. Let the engineers deal with it. <laughs> anyway, enough politics. <laughs> yes, Ian. Yeah, uh, that's one of the reasons why I noticed it's a little bit of a pain in the backside to have a lot of crew members. I, I had a full complement of crew, which I was playing around with, but yes. Inactive staff also take their cut of anything you do, which is a little bit of a pain in the backside. So you can't just keep them stored up for a rainy day. They will just eat into your profits. Um, so it, it just doesn't really make a lot of sense to have any uh, crew members stashed away because they're just going to cut into the amount of money you're making, which is madness. But there we are. Kind of put me off uh, having crew members really because they uh, there's no point having them if they're just taking money regardless of whether or not you're using them. Thank you there you and yes there's Snake Man there's the uh, the newsletter 150 there. <laughs> Trump won because his supporters farmed more power play merits. Yeah exactly. If you don't take part in power play you don't win. That's it. Mm. Right we are looking for uh, something around C3. We are looking for some signal sources. What are we looking for? Encrypted data storage. So we're going to have to look for some... Uh, let's wait for some signal sources to pop up. And get that little audio notification when that's. Can we petition Frontier to take the non-active NPCs off the payroll? It's a good suggestion, actually, Milra. I think it, it would it would make sense. Um, if nothing else, I mean, the best thing to do put up a a thread in the forum, and at least if the guys get a chance to review it, then they can kind of give some feedback or, or some indication as to why that is the case that the inactive NPCs take payment. I can understand it from a payment, but I think it should be at least be if they're not doing anything a reduced amount, kind of like a you're on the back burner sort of thing. Zero zero contract for NPC, yeah. What did I say? Did I say Mil I didn't say that, did I, Millstone? It's been a long week, like I said. Yes, anyway, speaking of long weeks, uh, got a feel for the guys actually there. They were supposed to be in a live stream this week, but it kind of got a little bit postponed. As I said, office was a little busy, as you can imagine. Um, so yeah, that is really is a scary picture of Ed, isn't it? We need to get Ed a new stock photo, I think, on there. Uh, but yeah, so that has been postponed. So the uh, the Ed versus Zach face-off, a little bit of an exploration mashup thing, uh, it's been postponed to the 24th of November, because obviously it's going to be really busy next week as well, because beta this week, the launch next week, absolute chaos in the frontier office, I imagine. But yeah, the guys have been 
absolutely smashing it out of the park. I don't know if you've managed to catch any of the live stream stuff for um, uh, for Planet Coaster, but it has been nailing it every possible angle. It's just been really, really awesome to them. So, tip my hat to the guys. They've had a fantastic week so far. Uh, Sean, actually, the, the very best method is hire pirate, user pirate, fire pirate, and then cash your rewards so they don't actually take the money at all. Right, yeah, of course, because when the, they take the cut when you cash the rewards, don't they? So, uh, yeah, hire them, use them, you take the 30 grand initial cut. So basically, it's a one off payment. You take the 30 grand uh, payment uh, cut for the, you know, to give to them for, as the initial payment, fire them cash in all your million credit uh, missions, whatever it is, and then just hire a new... A new <laughs> uh, Daimaru Hack! Ah, you're going to the Planet Coaster launch week. I would love to go to the thing. Unfortunately, it's, it's just going to be madness for me next week. I, I've got a four-day week because of Fantasticon on Friday, and in typical IT style, that just means you have to squeeze five days' worth of work into four, uh, so it's just not going to happen for me, unfortunately. Was Ed feeling ill? Is that is that the reason why they postponed it? I know they've had a busy week as well, so maybe a little bit of both there. Oh, mission objective! Here we go. Encrypted data storage! We'll go. Various crap systems online. Cover me! I'm going in! All clear, Commander. Put me in the thick of it. Oh, landing here as well. What have we got? Legal salvage of grain. Certainly a lot easier than cargo scooping in Frontier Elite 2. As much as I love it. Absolutely impossible. That was one thing we didn't get round to last week, was it? We did a bit of a retro stream in case you didn't join in last week, which was immense fun going back and playing uh, the prequel to Elite Dangerous uh, Frontier. Well, not the, the prequel, prequel. One of the prequels, uh, Frontier Elite Two on the on the Amiga, which is absolutely awesome. The game of my childhood, and uh, yeah, it was it was immense fun to get back and remind myself how mind-blowingly difficult that game was to play and how easy we have it now so when I hear people rant and rave about things on Elite Dangerous being difficult I just laugh in their face cargo scoop ready. Automated docking ready to commence. come on Carmella uh, five days and four thought I was just being a life of no Paul Archer it, it, that, that is that is IT. That's how it works. Management still expects things to happen exactly the same as they did before. There we go. Fighter is docked. Is right, where is the next place we need? So there's still some more things to be found around Glisa C3. Back into Super Cruise. Frameshift drive. Charging. Frameshift drive. Frameshift drive. Uh, how'd you get to the launch party? Um, I don't know whether it was freely open or whether it was a coaster head only thing, but if you signed up for the coaster head club, which I think was an, was an, an additional payment early on on the, the, the Frontier Store, I'm not sure if it's still available as an option now, but when Planet Coaster was first announced, uh, the coaster head club was one of the things you could cash into. Definitely everyone who'd signed up for the coaster head club um, got an, in, uh, uh, an invite. I don't know if it's. Uh... Ooh, there we go. No, that's just a regular signal source. Let's go and have a look anyway. Refined crystals, chemical manipulators. <laughs> oh my goodness! I spent ages looking for them dumb things, and there they are. Okay, let's go get them. Um, yeah, and there's a, there's a forum post on the Planet Coaster forum for you to, to check in and, and sign up. I don't know whether that's available to general public though. Is it Taimaru? Is it casual? It's uh, casual dress code, yeah. And it's in London. No, that's great. 
Stuart, you don't think you lasted five minutes in Elite Fighter? Well, to be perfect, Royal Hanky, greetings, buddy. Didn't see you doing that. To be perfectly honest, when I played Frontier Elite on the Amiga, I sucked at it. I really, was, I found it very difficult. Um, I didn't know how to fight properly. I didn't know how to uh, explore properly, which is something I did last week for the first time uh, properly in Frontier, going and scooping and doing that stuff. The idea of doing that really scared me. I mean, when I played it on the Amiga when I was younger, I just stuck to the bubble, did the basic missions, did the basic trading, didn't really do much else. I want chemical manipulations. Do I want anything else? It's rare. Some of these are pretty good, but I'm not really too worried about them at the moment. I'll be kicking myself when I find out that those things are actually really difficult to obtain. <laughs> I didn't get there. Shan, uh, unfortunately, no, I can't go. I would like to go, but I can't go, unfortunately. Uh, Command have you noticed that the paint wear and, and tear got fixed? Uh, you spent your ships ten zero. Yes, they don't automatically uh, repair the uh, the paint now uh, when you hit repair all, which is nice. You have to go into the advanced maintenance in order to repair your ship. But I love that too, as well as uh, Flint. It's I love the way, it looks, especially if you do a couple of runs to uh, Hutton. It's almost like a badge of honor that it's like, yeah, I've been. I've been to Hutton and back, so I think you know, you'll see your shit will battered up to heck. <laughs> Did Zach not 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 invite Alvin to the Planet Coaster launch? Oh. <laughs> Don't get me started on rare engineer maps. I know, I know, it's inconsistent. Actually, did you? Yeah, you beat me to it. So there's a handy info for the for the engineers. Whilst you say that, to, this was something I was going to mention um, for the community guys. There's also that area there, the galaxy component, which is a, is a good listing of all the stuff you want. And there's a reason for that, actually. You'll notice uh, the community goal that I picked up this week, this new one for this... Oh, I picked the wrong one. The Zosi Major Corporation is searching for these things. Now, this is a little confusing, so a little bit confusing. So you, you want to read this very, very carefully. Now, first of all, it lists the progress in tons collected, which is total BS because some of the things required are uh, materials uh, and data. Which last time I checked, data wasn't measured in tons. Um, so I think it's just a generic uh, string thing which hasn't been replaced. So yeah, bug report. Let's put that <laughs> put that weight in on the list of things that need to be fixed. Units collected, um, just to be general. Uh, Stuart, no, I don't have a 1060. I'm not sure if anyone else does. Um, are you having issues with the 1060? Uh, Steven, Astrid, yeah, I wish the ships had the re registration identifiers again. I like the, the Kilo, Echo, Romeo. I love that kind of thing. I'd love to see it on the ships as well. Those are heavy hard drives. Yeah, exactly. One data unit is an entire ton. Yeah, so uh, jumping back onto the uh, to the newsletter really quickly, and let's skip around. Um, commodity appeal. There we go. So the Soviet Major Corporation has placed an open order for thermic alloys, chemical manipulators, and industrial firmware. Now, if you go and use that link that I um, put in the thing, the Galaxy Component, so you can find some of these things. Some of those are rare, typical. Here we go. I've got another signal source. Um, some of them are rare, but you'll find that the, I think the easiest one to obtain is the uh, industrial firmware, which are from like data points on planet surfaces or uh, from mission objectives. I have to speed up a little bit and turn around. Ooh, up she goes. Uh, so uh, yeah, look out for those industrial firmware if you want to get in, uh, into that CG this week. There we go. Looking getting away as you're 780 killed at some oh bugger. That's a pain in the ass. Encrypted data storage, pesticides, clothing. Someone had a bust up here. Oops, no. I'm not gonna do much deploying the SOV. Roger. Sally present startup engaged. Cover me, I'm going in. Online, awaiting your order. Ah, tell me the uh, launch event is for the general public. You don't have to log on to the forums. Cool. Limited number. Yeah, I think there was a Google document, wasn't there, to uh, keep track of the people who requested a uh, a ticket. I think it's you and a plus one. Can't afford the 1070. Yeah, the um, it's a, a significant jump up, the 1070. But the 60 range tends to be the sweet spot for the NVIDIA cards. Um, 
you know, for a kind of performance bang for the buck. Boop. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. I had a 560 for a long time, actually. Before I moved up. Don't play football with the valuable mission critical cargo crash. <laughs> I was half hoping he'd drop the pilot into the SRV. Now, that would be a fun bug if you just ended up stranded in your SRV with the wheels spinning and you couldn't recall your ship. It was like, ah! <laughs> oh no, better still, you can make a bit of a mini game out of it and you have to find some way of scooping your SRV back up. <laughs> Telepresence for the win. That would be awesome. That would be a nice kind of uh, rescue salvage operation thing you could do. <laughs> a little thing. Anyone who managed to get onto that planet with a ridiculously high uh, mountain and zoom their SRV off, you can scoop, scoop them up and save them. Psycho Co is in the chat. I see you sneaking in there, sir. Greetings to you. How was the Drabble show, my friend? And the, <laughs> like that, yeah. the canister drifts past. It's sparks! <laughs> oh my god. So, so much fun. Ah, I love the space sphere. Oh, right. Let me. Cargo scoop. Not paying attention. Oh, no, 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 no. Thank you. Thank you to the developer who added that message. Fighter retrieval initiated, Commander. Come on, fight. Come on. Do we have a drinking word? We, we don't have a drinking word tonight. Oh, crack it. We need a drinking word. Something with a drinking word. Planet Coaster. I know that's us. <laughs> Oh dear, cow, what competition have I been signed up to now? Oh, what are you like? What are you like? Let's get back onto where we were on the newsletter before it all went horribly wrong. <laughs> yes, yeah, so as we mentioned on the thing, uh, you can now buy your weapon cosmic color modifiers in the uh, modificationers. That's what I'm going to go with modificationers in the uh, in the frontier store now. So go ahead and use those links below and uh, support the guys. It's a paint. It's a nice little thing. Like I said, I, I want to see loads of people with all of the different color modifications, uh, and I want to see a, a, a someone make a a video. For uh, for New Year's, firing all the different colours into the into the sky. That would be awesome. Give give a dog a bone. Oh, God. <laughs> I'm not gonna ask. Hashtag give a dog a bone. What is what what is, is the aim of your competition to get me to read out your hashtag and whoever does it wins? Because uh, if that's the case, you you win already, sir. <laughs> oh dear. Drinking word. Drinking word. Give a dog a bone. That's an interesting drink, word. not it? Nine eighty instead. Uh, they come down in price now. Yeah, because because of the ten series one. I don't want to know. Yeah, no, trust me, Hanky. No, really, don't want to know. <laughs> when is the Christmas tree coming out? I believe the Christmas tree again is back in stock. Um, uh, you don't want to be seeing that business. Hang on. Let's see if we can find it. I'm pretty sure uh, Frontier have added the, the Christmas tree back in stock. Uh, game, 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 game. There we go. Let's see if we can find it. <laughs> Mr. Winner, hello there. Give a dog a bone. 56 seconds. Is that how long it took to get me to say the hashtag for tonight? That's, that's got to be a record. Yes. Yes. There we go. You don't want to be seeing my thing. There we go. Yes. The oh, Christmas tree is back in stock in time for Christmas 2016. Thank you, Frontier. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Yes, so you can get the, uh, the Christmas tree back. And I'm going to have to decade... Decade the uh, all the bobbleheads with the Christmas tree and everything again. Oh, sorry. Okay, well, yes. Okay, when when am I getting the Christmas tree back in my ship? Yes, yeah, sorry. Yes, I'll have to do that. Of course, I have to do. I'll have to do that. I'll have to get the uh, the uh, letters as well because I got the letters bobblehead. I'll have to get the coloured lasers, and we can have a Christmas light show. Be awesome. <laughs> You guys, <laughs> right? 
Lazio. Uh, so back onto the community section on there. Uh, Commander Niku, uh, which I, I, I bet it a little meat actually, just a little while back on there. He is doing a series of uh, SRV destruction and race uh, streams over the next couple of days. He's immediately doing one straight after me. What's that, 10? Plus one GMT, so I, I'm not really sure if that's immediately after me or an hour before I end or something like that. But we, we will host him anyway once we're finished up here on Crash Landing tonight. Uh, we can tune into his thing, uh, his Twitch channel. I'll go ahead and put it into the chat there. So if you don't already follow, give him a follow. He's a lovely chap. What sort of poem would Matt Dog be given? <laughs> you got so terrible. I must admit, I do find that confusing when I look up at the chat window um, and the, the NPC chat comes in in the same colour coding as, uh, as player chat. So I see it and I kind of immediately think, oh, someone's messaged me, and I realise oh, it's just NPC chat. <laughs> oh, sorry about you met him at uh, Gamescom as well. Excellent, excellent. Come on, right, do we have... Oh, there's no more around C3. That's why I'm not getting any more mission notifications. We need to... to, to C3A. These are pretty easy missions, he says, and prepares to be ganked by an NPC in Super Cruise now. He has juicy looking cargo. <laughs> uh, Dirty, you just uh, shipped, switched to a ship you didn't use for a long time recently and is equipped with the tree. <laughs> Yes, it's not, it's not bad luck to leave your tree up, it's just a uh, bad taste. <laughs> yeah, Andy, uh, that, that would be a nice thing, actually, if the crew chat showed up as the same colour as their icon or something, so you could have some significant thing. Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a minor suggestion, something to go... Ooh. Something to go in. Never fear, Commander. Crash is here. He says, expecting to be jumped by pirates. Oh, see, I can't wait for the day when we can thaw out people in your cargo bay and have a chat with them. How did you get here, Commander? I was jumped by pirates. No, no, of course, better still. I didn't see it coming. It was green. It jumped me in hyperspace. over there. Oh, it's not, yeah, good point. The, for, for the uh, crew chat, you can do the same thing for wing chat as well, yeah. It, it, it's almost like you want um, the the little uh, wing icon to show up next to it or something, so it shows, like, right, that's that wing member, that's that person, you know, just just by their name, a little diamond or something like that. I don't know whether that can be embedded in a text string. I think that's a bit of a pain in the ass UI-wise because it's not really been coded to deal with that. But it would be a nice thing so you can see where that's coming from. I think definitely with multi-crew it becomes more pertinent that if you're looking at a message come in, um, you almost want that uh, uh, to be something which you know is quick and easy to see that, you know, Bob on the guns is telling you that and, and Jane on the, uh, the engineering is telling you something else. So I think... Yes, echoes from the whole awesome voice back. Yes, I'll, I can make do with that. I, I'll be happy with that. Have the crew, uh, the crew randomly, uh, not the crew, sorry, the uh, stowaways in, in the hold there randomly uh, shouting abuse at me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a better one, Prime right Nine. Yeah, actually. What are you doing here, Commander? I pushed the self destruct button, the wrong red button. <laughs> If you do put that in as an option, Prime Nine, you have to convince whoever does the, the the strings for the for the missions and the gameplay text and all that kind of stuff. You have to convince them to put something in for that. So if you get that, would be a cool thing to convert. First of all, you convert an occupied escape pod into a passenger if you've got a passenger cabin, uh, and by doing that, you can kind of get like an extra like bonus mission to take them somewhere. But I was just thinking that is a really good thing. You can have a mission taken. Like I was on my way somewhere when I did a mad dog. <laughs> I'm sorry, buddy. I love you. <laughs> but that would be that would be great. I'd love that. Yeah. Fool someone out. Whoa, 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 whoa,
whoa, whoa. I'm gonna make like my name. It's alright, it'll buff it. <laughs> Sold! <laughs> Put that into Jira on Monday morning, Prime 9. Hide that away somewhere, and when it comes round. <laughs> Put this mission description in there. <laughs> awesome. I love that. It does raise an interesting point. I mean, you know, when people talk about the whole FPS and you know what you do on your ship and stuff like that, it's you know, it's the little things like that that people don't consider. Everyone thinks about walking around your ship maintenance, doing that stuff. Um shall I turn frozen crew into sausages. Exactly. That was one of the things I really, really missed. I did crash into the wrong planet millstone, yeah. Um one of the things I really miss from Frontier Elite 2 is that uh, you know, forgetting to put cargo hold uh um, uh, what's it called? Uh, life support, um, and then you instantly turn your turn your uh, crew, um, not crew, your passengers and, and, and slaves into uh, into fertilizer the second you go into orbit, which is <laughs> one of those things. But yeah, it does raise an interesting kind of idea. It's like, how could you uh, do something more with escape pods? I think that's a, that's, a, that's a nice a nice possibility. I think being a, if you have the option. To thaw them out and put them in a passenger cabin, you can kind of increase the rewards you get because it kind of encourages players to want to have passenger cabins in certain kinds of ships. Then and looking in uh, signal sources and things like that for occupied escape pods uh, becomes just 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 another interesting little possible wrinkle. <laughs> yeah, Toad. I think I think you told me you they might have snuck a few lines about doing a mad dog into some of the voice packs. <laughs> Naughty Toad. Oh, toad, toad, toad has to be at Fantasticon next week. It's got to be. Oh dear, Shan. I used to be a commander like you until I took an escape pod to the knee. Oh. I suppose that is topical with the release of the special edition of Skyrim. <clears throat> I don't think we're when we won't worry about it. CQC is a bit of fun, Hanky. I think we're just uh, we're all taking part in and picking on poor old Mad Dog for his birthday. <laughs> Thirty nine birthday bumps. <laughs> oh, that's an interesting one, Prime Man. It's a, something from the design documents. Yeah, it's a shame that didn't make it. I agree. Uh, at one point, cargo would decay over time, so you get slaves, meat, fertilizer, and then bio waste. As a kind of chain of things. That's an interesting thing. I mean, that kind of ties in with some of the stuff I was I was talking to uh, uh, Sandra about, actually. But again, it's those things. That if the, if there isn't a fun and interesting gameplay loop for those kind of things, people just, you know, it, it, it's not worth putting the effort in of making it. Though, is it? You know, taking it out of the design and, you know, when you put a, a prototype in, does it actually make fun gameplay sense to have that in there? Ooh, do I need to land for these ones? Actually, I don't think I do. Actually, uh... black box C three A. Yeah, black boxes. I need <coughs> signal sources around the. Yeah, so it will be signal sources. Military plans, yeah. Oh yeah, so that's an additional extra reward. I've got to keep my eye out for it, so I'm going to do that. Um, Did not get discussed in the DDF a long time ago, Snot says, yeah. And uh, Prime saying, probably, yeah. It is. Suddenly the plans meet reality, time limits and developer capacity say no a lot. Yeah, I understand entirely. <laughs> it's, uh, it's something I'm all too familiar with myself. All these crazy ideas that a lot of people have and exactly how things are going to all fit together and that sort of stuff. And they all sound wonderful, but when pen comes to paper, it's like, yeah, that's just going to take months and months of effort and uh, not really be possible. Let's go to the dark side of this planet, actually, because I get the feeling with that other planet in the way it's kind of interfering with the signal sources we're finding. <clears throat> It was a good laugh, and we do enjoy a, a bit of CQC every now and then. I did manage to get my rank up a little bit, actually. When I go 6% champion, it's going to take me a considerable amount of time to fill that bar up again. 
It's hard work. I must admit, this, the scaling on CQC missions is uh, it's a hard slog. It's a, a lot of endurance. The dark side of the moon, yes, I need to play some Pink Floyd. <laughs> oh dear, you guys. Right, yeah, let's jump back onto where we were on the newsletter, if I can find the window where it is. There we go. Uh, also, in addition to Niku's streams, <clears throat> uh, we have the Pixel Bandits are doing a charity stream starting tomorrow, uh, 3 in the afternoon GMT. Uh, remember, the clocks have gone back now, so if you're not in the UK time zone, then... Uh, because I know I do have some viewers in different time zones and all. Uh, you have to just, just check on a website. You can find it. Google will tell you. Uh, yeah, so 1500 GMT tomorrow, the Pixel Bandits are doing a, uh, a community uh, get together there, which is really awesome. I'll put the link in the chat there, right there, which is really, really awesome to see. Lunatics are in your head, Snoz. No, no, the lunatic is on your screen, mate. <coughs> Mad dog! I see him in the chat there. You, you, you missed my conversation with you. I won't repeat it. I still love you. <laughs> uh, Arbomont, the weapon colour is a new module. Will it take damage? Interesting. Does it show up in the module panel? Weapon colour purple. Ah, because you can turn it on and off. Huh. Interesting. It's 100% when I just slammed into that planet, so my assumption is it doesn't take any kind of damage. Um... I mean, as far as that goes, module-wise, I assume that's a module, as in a a firmware module. It's ethereal. It's virtual. It can't take damage because it's part of your ship's computer. So that's my lore excuse, and that's what I'm sticking to. Easy. It's game time. Exactly, Millstone Barn. It's, it's universal galactic time. If you uh, if you get confused, just use the in-game time. Wait, what on earth are you going to Revlon? Is this part of this stupid, stupid thing you're trying to get me to say random things again? You guys, technically a module, but landing your decals and other things are also technically modules. They're just not damageable ones. Ah, that's it. I suppose that's it. It kind of makes sense. That it's kind of a, a um, an optional extension to the ship object. You know, in terms of. Data-wise, you know, it, it, it's one of those Cody Cody things. It gets hidden away, doesn't it? Shortcut key to quickly talk. Yes, I do have a shortcut key for toggling that moose. I actually do. There we go. Right back onto the newsletter. Yes. Yeah, so um, we did touch on this last week, I think, actually, because I was I was following the uh, the thread, the crazy thread naught on the. Uh, uh, various discoveries of the Canon Group, yes, and the HIP-17862 system around the uh, uh, the airless planetoid of 6CA, uh, discovered by Commander Deneb, is the second mysterious assumed alien wreck there. Um, slightly different configuration than the one we've already found, which is interesting. So it's, uh, uh, and all hints suggest that it's a relatively recent uh, crash, shall we say. Um, so, hmm. again, in the Pleiades sector, it's in that same sort of region of space, so definitely something interesting going on in that area. <clears throat> Not seeing any signal sources at the moment, that's a bit of a pain. Ah! <laughs> Speak of the devil. Uh oh. Oh. See how many black boxes we need then. Right, so oh. Carmela, cover me. Welcome. I'm going in. Fighter is online. I'm ready when you are. Fire at will. Copy. Monitoring scanners, Commander. Ready to engage. <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. <laughs> Technically, station knocking blades and entire <laughs> the entire cylinder are also modules. Please don't fit one into a sidewinder. <laughs> 
that sounds like either a a a, uh, a debug mistake or a, a a bit of a an odd hack that you've spotted someone doing. I do remember very early on actually that someone managed to uh, do that way back in the alpha, didn't they? They uh, managed to try out an anaconda before it was a flyable ship by swapping out the ship in memory so that it would think that you're well you'd still be flying the sidewinder but it would think that it was an anaconda <laughs> i can imagine that poor old sidewinder with a ridiculously large weapon attached to it or something like that <laughs> memory hacks for the win don't do it i don't condone it you will have your account blocked See, that's not fair. After you get all the fun. see, this is another reason why having a publicly available beta server, uh, just like you know, like other games like World of Warcraft and stuff, doing that would be an awesome thing because you could let players do crazy crap and it wouldn't matter. Right, I think. Yep, that's all I needed in this. Oh no, I got to get back to Super Cruise to see if there's any more. Whoop, whoop, whoop! Come and I get your ass back in here. Automated docking ready to commence. Sidewinder can have a fighter pay that way. Yeah, good point, Andy. Yeah, good point. Whatever happened to Commander Blackley? Um, I I got his contact. I was staying in touch with him. I went out, kind of pinged him. Uh, Jan is past his room. Just yes, as in uh, Jan. I did see that on there. Yes, I mean Blackley. He was he was really keen on the idea of a single player mode, so he could do exactly those are the kind of things he enjoyed doing was um, uh, messing around with. Uh, uh, various things that he shouldn't be messing around with. That's why he was so good at giving that feedback early on in Alpha. Um, but yeah, he really wanted a, an offline single player mode, and unfortunately, he's, without that, he wasn't really that interested in what he could do, which is a shame. Oh, cool. That's good to hear, Prime Nine. Yeah, you want it, that's one of the things you'd like to push as a, a large open beta. Yeah, it, it, it would be fun. If that could be something you could do, I mean, oh, poop, poop sticks, a deadly anaconda. I'm screwed. thing under construction oh that would be cool to see it being put together inside the holder right I need to get the heck out of dodge before that anaconda comes back anaconda don't my anaconda don't want none unless you got guns Run away! <laughs> you promises nothing to do with your your hacky hacky evil ship, Prime Nine. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I, I've seen, I've seen it. Uh, identified. So, uh, I don't want to stop. I just want to get to the other thing. Oh, is that? No, it's just an adder. It's just an eagle. I might something small I could probably cope with, but I uh, don't really want to mess around with an anaconda, a deadly one at that. When I'm just in a keelback distress call. Should we do it? Should we do it? Should we do it? Vote now or forever. Hold thy peace. I don't have a. Uh, I don't have a fuel limpet controller on this ship, but. Threat 2 is probably someone under pirate attack, so... Steven Usher votes no! Oh, actually, do I have a fighter? Fighter is constructed, so we are good to go. 
Uh, Prime when Sandy and I did the Elite Open Trading Places stream, you did actually set up two pairs of pythons. The ones we used were legal inside the range of what players can get, and the other pair were distinctly not. They worked, but we were never used to set them on stream. <laughs> That's the great thing about it. See, that, that's the awesome thing, is you can kind of slot in these modules, so even though technically uh, uh, it's there's, there are no cheats, you can kind of have these hidden away things that you can use for testing purposes, of course. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. It must happen. Educational. Commander Flint's asking for capital ships to cruise around in. We wouldn't attack anything, honest. Yeah, right. I tell you what, you can... Oh! I'm going to say, in this instance, Mr. Usher was right. <laughs> Sorry, Mr. Type 9, you're going to have to look after yourself against Mr. Deadly uh, Anaconda there. I just got to get out of weapons range, come on. I got the drop on him because I sped past him right. Out of weapons range. Boost, boost, boost. Full power to engines. I don't care if she's under strain. Give me more. Crikey, the example the beam was a quad damage gimbaled beam with an inverted four shell on it, so it worked as a tractor beam. <laughs> Excellent. So instead of pushing them away, it pulled them towards you. <laughs> Surely the devs will be flying around in Thargoid ships? What's a Thargoid time marine? They don't exist. They're a myth. Mike's How in God's name did it get there? Yeah. Let's just go with um, FSD wibbly wobbly stuff. <laughs> yeah, it's a little bit of a... It, it's, it's a weird thing that it's like... If it's an in-memory, uh, yeah, I mean, you know, let's do, I mean, let's go back to the to the base. But yeah, okay, it is an annoying uh, break in reality. Uh, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna say the the I word. Ah, he got back in range because I wasn't paying attention. Yeah, it is a bit of an annoying thing when a when a ship does that. But it, 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 there seems to be some kind of internal register of uh, ships which should appear in super cruise and things like that. Um, and then gameplay wise they just kind of get dragged into local real space instances uh, which is just seems like a weird thing now I assume there is some logic behind doing it but there seems to be some in, implicit uh, uh, problem with the way that calculation works has decided to sponsor it because obviously we saw that that ship was left back at that other planet it didn't appear in Super Cruise it didn't follow me there so there is no persistence there it's just kind of like a, a generative thing um, which again, I mean, I've always said persistence is something which is, is very difficult to do in the uh, in the way that Elite set up, um, uh, because you know anything could happen in between me leaving that one space and going to another space, and the game is trying to do things to bring gameplay to you. It's the same with the signal sources uh, and the scans that you see on the planet surfaces. Is the there's no you know if it was. Um, uh, you know, like I've said this before, if it was uh, randomised the way that reality would be, you'd never find anything because space is just too damn big. So yeah, it's uh, it's a bit of a gameplay thing, but it is it is a weird, a weird thing. I must admit, I, I don't know if there's anything that could be done to make it a little bit more believable than that thing, and without some level of persistent server side that would uh, uh, you know track the position of NPCs in a system on the server and, and make sure that they couldn't magically and impossibly teleport to locations. What's that Musa there? You should have brought back the frag beam weapon combo. Have the beam splitter laser of death. Yeah, I, li I like the idea of that. It's like a beam laser that sucks the ship to you sort of thing, but I think that would be massively OP. It's nice to have something, you know, something which would kind of like have a, have a, have a more of a tractor pull effect on it um, but I imagine it would for balance wise it would have to take a kind of a significant um, uh, reduction in damage to kind of compensate for it because I mean it's almost like a like the ultimate gimbaled laser that not only does it, it you could have it to track something but it brings them closer to the uh, to the laser as well crazy uh, Andy no I mean um, it 
not necessarily more persistence equals more memory uh, game client wise there's lots of different variations of the term persistence now obviously um, the the tracks the SOV tracks on the planet that is local client side memory which is being used for that level of persistence and that's uh, something which you know it's a relatively small amount of memory it's not really going to be a biggie but something more complicated like keeping track of all of the NPC states and values across jumps between super cruise instances and local space instances and all that kind of stuff because effectively you'd have to be simulating a super cruise instance keeping keeping track of that Super Cruise instance of that NPC as if it was a real player flying around to time the fact that they're arriving at the local instance that, that, that you're then in. So that becomes more of a server side thing. So there are layers to persistence. It's crazy. Um, Prime there's a lot of things that modded items can do but never should in the live game. Hence why you have a, a period during beta where the rules are suspended. Me go mad. Anything fun might, might make it into reality. There. Yeah, yeah, that's 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 the trouble, isn't it? Is beta's all about that kind of. Playing around with all of the, the crazy options open to you. Not to mention data transfer. Yes, totally. Yeah, exactly. That's another um, thing. More performance would be needed as well. The handle will fetch transaction. Yeah, exactly. There's, there's there's layers to it. There's so much that has to go on to make persistence a thing. Um, and you know, elite at the moment makes the most of is the, is the of the approach that it can because of the real one-to-one -one scale of the galaxy, you can't possibly even comprehend full one-to-one -one scale persistence for everything in the galaxy. It is mind-blowingly uh, complex and, and just nail on impossible. There's just no machine in the world can do it. Hence the magic of procedural generation. Procedural generation takes away that level of persistence. The complete antithesis of procedural generation is one-to-one -one persistence of the galaxy. That's what Everything is uh, simulated simultaneously in the galaxy. Everything is stored simultaneously uh, of the entire uh, elite galaxy, which is what a lot of other games do in the in the in the world they're in the level they're in. Uh, Minecraft, for example, has two levels of persistence. You have the the game world persistence. Once it's generated, it physically exists on disk. It is a uh, a, a physical persistent thing, and then also that has a simulation. Uh, area so like a certain distance around the player is simulated while well, each player uh, is simulated uh, so you know that's where you get blocks updating things changing uh, characters moving around and th things like that you know NPCs and stuff like that um, so there are you know two layers of persistence really in in, in, a, in a Minecraft world um, with Elite Dangerous it's a lot more complex there are a lot more layers of, of things going on what's that he's saying to Sean there um, Crash landing makes sense. Not yeah, it's the first time for everything. Yeah, once in my life I have to make sense. Yeah, <laughs> right. More signals. Oh, there's some orcas flying around. Not orcas, belugas, I should say. Sorry. Free the dolphin. Hashtag free the dolphin. Uh, what's that? Uh, this dev has a double speed eagle that weighs as much as three anacondas and <laughs> wants to ram you. <laughs> now that's that's really cheap. Well, that's an old school cheat. I like that's like the Frontier Elite 2 cheat where you can hollow out a ship and have way more cargo space than in, ever possible. Uh, the main thing that would have enough NPCs to enable full persistence, so the procedural generation is required, as uh, Crash says. Yes. Uh, so you want to build an eagle from a neutron star core, yeah. <laughs> There are already persistent players. They are uh, persistent characters. They are core players. Exactly, uh, Ty Maria. That's and that's kind of how it works. Is uh, you as a player have a kind of a certain amount of persistent data around you. Like uh, me at the moment, even though I'm in this. Uh, I mean, I think I'm in private group at the moment rather than open play. This is my own personal private instance, effectively, because there's no one else around. There's just NPCs. So those NPCs at the moment are only persistent for me in my memory space on my computer. You know, nothing else needs to be aware of, of the locations of these NPCs going around in Super Cruise. Uh, and, you know, so that's one layer of persistence there. 
Now, if another player comes into the instance, they need to be aware of those locations of those NPCs. So my machine, you'll see a spike in bandwidth down in the bottom corner there as my machine then tells that player all of the information about this island, this, you know, what's going on in this instance, where the NPCs are, what they're doing, all that stuff. And then they have to kind of keep in sync uh, as every time those NPCs update, because one of us will then be the authority on that island. One of our machines will be the, the kind of ad hoc server in our peer-to-peer -peer network which suddenly exists and that's kind of the beauty of the way that uh, Elite works is as players bubble in uh, people can just kind of swap and change and become the authority in this local uh, instance in Supercruise here um, but again I mean there's also things which currently aren't persistent so uh, you know looking at the this planet this planet only uh, in terms of its, its existence at the moment only exists as far as the geometry you see there so that kind of uh, mostly spherical geometry there um, there are currently no surface details in terms of like materials and the things that you see in your SRV none of that exists yet it hasn't been generated that's the wonderful thing about it that's taking up no memory it doesn't exist when I land on that planet it'll start to get generated as I approach it you'll start to see the little rocks on the surface and things like that and then that'll start to fill up my local memory again it's not something that needs to be anywhere else other than my local space. Um, now I'm not exactly sure on the algorithm of how, how Elite generates the things on the surface, but I believe them to be ter deterministic, which means it's the same algorithm, it's the same generation routine uh, that can run on every single person's machine and run and get the exact same results. So if I land on that planet and then another player comes along, they technically don't need all of my network data, sorry, my, my network being rammed, um, sending all of that data for all of the position of all of the little rocks on the surface. Uh, uh oh. Oh, go away! I've got a big bag of crabs here. I'm going to stick them in my mother's. I'm going to run away like a complete wuss. Oh, where is my chaff button? There is my chaff button. Damn it! Damn it! Run away! Michaelus0037, um, I don't have a link handy from my HUD display, but it is something that I borrowed from another commander. It is available as a, uh, um, a... If you search for Elite Green HUD, you most likely find it right. I'm just going to... Come on, I just want to... Drop out of Super Cruise. Drop, drop, drop. There we go. Drop out of Super Cruise. There we go. Give me a chance for my shields to recover and we'll go on to the news there. Um, the HUD... Is that inf what that info loading during hyperspace? Um, Andy, it's it's a little bit of everything going on during hyperspace. There's quite a lot going on. I think some of the things that happens locally is the Stellar Forge is generating the system you're jumping into. Um, so you're just creating all the the planet and star information and all that stuff. Um, majority of what's going on during hyperspace, I believe, is retrieving system data from the frontier servers about the current state of that system, because obviously it's constantly changing it by the background simulation and players' effects and stuff like that, so you, you have to get that information from the server to tell you what's happening in that system currently. So that's the um, a lot of what's going on in, in hyperspace uh, and in super cruise transitions when people say about, oh, why is there a lag? Blah, 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 blah. It's not seamless. It's like, it's, it's your network is not quick enough to get the data. That's what it is. It, you know, oh, go away. That's a system authority vessel. That's okay. Oh, no. It's haulage. Okay. I've got nothing illegal. Thank you, officer. I'm minding my own business. Uh, oh, sorry, I missed a couple of things. Uh, what's that? You were attacked by an NPC in distance and damage. You jumped away at 54% and then tapped you straight away with 100% hull and shield. Uh, yeah, an again, another thing about the, the persistence is that you know when you jump out of those instances, the the information about the, the state of that NPC is lost. It's discarded and then it's generated again the same way next time. So again, it's that something needs to be kept somewhere, whether that be on your client uh, or whether that's kept on the server, um, to, to kind of 
persist it across boundaries, and that, that's where it gets complex. And I think it would probably have to be server side for these particular NPC things that we see. Uh, so, Craig Travis, uh, Commander Kral Travis, sorry, uh, you just transferred a shield sub booster from module storage and got an unrecoverable error. Card. Ah, yes, there are some reported issues with module. Or, oh my god, this guy is a. Do you know what? Frigging pirates. I'm going to cash in some of my missions. Actually. That's a high wake. Damn it. Didn't see that. I thought the authority vessel was still there. Um, it happens every time you go to take fitting. Yes, yes, Carl Travis. It's a known thing on the uh, on the forums. I believe a fix is in the work for that particular thing. Um, I think it happens on engineered modules mostly. So, uh, Prime Minister, you do love the one description procedural generation elite between the code and seed data. You can see Stellar Forge as a compression algorithm for the galaxy. Yeah, yeah. I mean that's one of the things um, I, I said in the past. Actually, it's I. I've done a, a little bit of work on, on things like that myself, so it's something I've used to describe that kind of thing uh, myself as well. I, I, I like that, as it is kind of a, you know, any kind of procedural generation is, is effectively a incredibly um, compact and, uh, and, I wouldn't say specific, but uh, kind of custom, tailor-made compression algorithm for that particular uh, uh, problem that you're trying to, to represent. <clears throat> Myself. Uh, oh, Lebo, 10 out of 10 for persistence. Yeah, he is a persistent bugger, isn't he? Like, if only he was more persistent in his state. <clears throat> Arms like noodles, greetings. What's the price of I don't know what the price of cheese is. Uh, yep, oh, yep, there we go, Crump. Yep, from Furry Toad. They uh, chuck that on the... Um, on the support thing there. I think the guys are already aware of it, uh, but do send that in. Uh, Shannon, are passenger missions where the passenger is secretive meant to auto-fail on scan? I thought they were supposed to have a couple of chances to get scanned before they rage quit. Uh, that's not the... No, you're not talking about the bug where people were getting blown up instantly on criminal masterminds in their passenger thing, because I believe that one was resolved. But the secretive ones, I'm not sure about. I haven't seen that particular mission pop up exactly. Uh, oh, Planet Monitor, but the seed data for Stellar Forge is 56 megabyte in the command position. The majority of that is the known stars data pipes that you've imported from. 56 meg for the all of it, including the known stars. That is incredibly compact. I mean, I've looked at Stellar databases myself, actually, as a, some side projects, and I mean, there were hundreds of megabytes for some of the data I was looking at for these. Uh, uh, the known stars. Gee whiz. If that's that, oh, let go. Oh my god, get a hobby! <sighs> just, just. Copy. Deploying the fighter now. Guy. Where's the system authorities? This is only a medium sex system, isn't it? Yeah, it doesn't look good. It look good. It's an anaconda. You're not going to do good, are you? Uh, no! Great! I'm in an anarchy system, so I'm fair game! My shields are down. 
Commander. <laughs> this guy's got a crush on crash. <laughs> Any more of this and I've had it, Commander. Hull is critical. Fighter is down, Commander. Totally troll this anaconda and fly all the way back to Cochrane Works in uh, in normal space. Um, so there's some other data stored inside of that. Primarily, the volume textures used for the well-known. Yeah, yeah, I was going to say they, they would have to be pretty big volume textures for that amount of data there. High wake and kind of, I I have high waked from the system. He was following me in Shan. This guy must have a wake scanner. He is uh, a persistent pain in the ass. That's why I just want to cash in the missions that I've got so that I don't lose them. Get rid of some of this cargo, and then if he does make me go pop bitty bang bang, it's only quarter of a million credits down the swanny if he does do that. And he's welcome to it. I'm not going to stand much of a chance against a deadly anaconda in a keelback. But I refuse to fly anything bigger because it's just more risk. I don't want to lose any more money. He has a hobby, yes, yeah, sorry. So, as I say, arguably, I don't know if it's testing interdictors, as in uh, his hobby is getting on my tits. <laughs> Annoying me. Uh, yes, yeah, so, sort of, to yeah, Toad has got his nearly 60 light year anaconda. The Deep Thrust 3, isn't it, Toad? Is that what you, you dubbed her? Uh, Hanky, are the missions bugged? Is there a low payout? No, I don't believe so, no. I mean, I, I've picked up a couple of the missions I got at the moment are a few million credits apiece. Rockanori! Greetings, Commander! And thank you very much for the host there. Appreciate that. Uh, he's a mission generated. Yes, he is mission generated, Shan. Um, Oleg. What's its face, Mr. I've got an anaconda and I'm going to troll you across the galaxy. Which is arguably uh, quite a realistic interpretation of a pirate player. <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> The deep thrust four, eh? The green herd, yeah, it's it's it is quite the Christmassy. Yeah, I agree. Um, the main reason for it is it was really nice when I was exploring, actually, because uh, it shows up quite well against all star classes. Um, thank you, flight control. Heading to docking bay zero five. Um, yeah, the um, it was very very handy for exploration. It's, little bit difficult when you get back into combat and things like that because it's hard to kind of tell the difference between certain uh, uh, friendly targets and neutral targets. Oh! A landing's a landing! That's what we like here on this channel. Docking completed. Power down systems. Enjoy your visit, Commander. Wow, you can get her to 60 feet light years if you strip it down. But yeah, but no, that's, that's the thing, isn't it? If you go too crazy with um, stripping the ships down, it just comes a little bit... Silly, isn't you? Making everything uh, D-rated and everything. Ooh. Livery is not showing up. There we go. For the keel back. Is it? Oh no, that wasn't what I was going to check. We're going to check the uh, advanced maintenance or something. Yeah, there we go. Ship integrity and paintwork is separate. Yay! That's the way it should be. I haven't done much travelling in Super Cruise, so you won't see that. Ooh. I should do what we what we discussed, Shan. <laughs> Get lost. You didn't do me any good. You just blew up two of my fighters. Okay, you might have distracted the NPC a little bit. That's fine. That that's that was a perfectly fine land. Any landing you can walk away from Snoz is fine. <clears throat> Noodles, yeah, yeah, that's straight. She did say she wanted the NPCs to be more like players. They definitely are that now, I must admit. Uh, what are we looking at now? That's a nice that's a nice chunk of change. I think we've made a couple of million handing those in. Anything else to oh, we have to go hand that into the uh, to the dock in Eli's have a look if we've got any more Federation missions. Kerching Easy missions, these ones. Easy missions, and you can see they have a decent payout. Oh, oh. seven point eight million for that one there. That's going to be about seventy-two targets. I thought that was going to be a lot of targets to do that. Uh, 
you've got to be careful when you're accepting the mission. They sound great on paper, when you actually look at the amount of effort they would have to go in to do that, it's like, yeah. Uh, ooh, that's a nice easy one. 23 hours to do that. We can get that done. We can head back over there for the other missions. Chuck that one in the list there. Sentry skimmers. 0.8 of a million. Nice and easy. Nice and easy. Know what I mean? Know what I mean? Uh, ships. Ooh. Assassinated services. This, this is great. It's a shopping spree. So many, so many fun missions. Uh, nice, easy mission one. A few credits on the side. A couple of thousand credits. Pays for the fuel, doesn't it? Take out the settlement generator. Now they are. Those are fun ones, actually. Master rated. That is in a different system, though. Three days to do it. I'll come back to that one at some point, right? I think I'm going to do a couple of missions that aren't going to need a crew member and are going to stay well out of the way of that frustrating uh, anaconda. Let's put it that way. Um, articulation motors. I know they're an engineering commodity. I know. I know. Salem. I know. I can get some more if I want them. I don't like to carry them around. Occupy the escape pod. Get out. Get my hold. As Peggy would say. <clears throat> uh, Commander Phoenix, you're a passenger mission for 63 million credits. It was a 24,000 light year trip as well. Yeah, that's uh, to the centre and back, I expect. X7. Greetings, Commander. Why is the Anaconda? The Anaconda is following me because I have taken up a mission um, to find some of these things here. Where has it got the encrypted data storage and the black boxes and, and things like that? That is one of the uh, the missions I have taken up. So because of that, a bounty hunter has been sent out to try and find me and stop me from retrieving said data. So the damn thing keeps following me around just trying to find me in the system. So, sod in. I'm going to go off and do some other things. I'll stay away from him to get bored. Am I a fellow West Countryman? Christ? I, I am from the vicinity of the southwest of England, yes. Absolutely. There's an idea. Cargo storage. <laughs> Soon, Toad. Soon. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know how to fly my ship. Flight control. Goodness. Come on. Come on. Whee! He's <laughs> probably similar stream. Yeah, he's a stream sniper. Stream sniper smells. Just wants to do away with me. Some missions will update and tell you that a ship has been sent to hunt down kind of thing. Yeah, so you get things up in the top here. Um, sometimes you get... Uh, nothing on that. Right, that's nice reputation chat. I can chuck that away. Uh, yeah, none of these. Oh, I just delete. Never mind. That was a bonus a bonus thing I could have done there. Sometimes you get the notifications up in the top there in the message box uh, to tell you that, you know, someone has been sent to hunt you down. Dirty bad storage. Terrible, terrible, terrible. Anyway, anyway, back to the newsletter whilst we're gaining altitude coming out of there. Uh, the conflict continues in Maya, yes, you might notice last week, the Apleides Resource Enterprise, which is a Federation-backed faction, I will have you know, uh, is still causing trouble for the Ant Hill mob over, over there. They are uh, uh, trying to gain a foothold in that system. Um, might not be a fun thing if they manage to do that, so I think... That's something I would encourage people to go and help the Ant Hill mob there, definitely. <laughs> They're going to cause a little bit of a tr trouble if they can get a bit of a foothold in there. But uh, yeah, there's definitely... Oh. My. God. Right. Screw you. 
I won the interdiction. <laughs> Get out. Uh, sorry. Rav, 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 Raver 92 there. Sorry. Elite speak. I'm failing with my elite speak this evening. Uh, I was going to say, why don't you just destroy the hunter? But then you say, why are you flying? Yes. A keel back. I could jump into something bigger, but it's just risking a bigger ship. Yeah. Uh, those Maya CGs are crazy. They last roughly 20 minutes. Yeah. They, they tend to zip past really, really quickly because everyone goes out there. Um, which kind of happened uh, with the CG last week with the... Uh, uh, actually, there we go. The the commodity appeal. No, not the commodity appeal. Or is it ancient data received? Yeah, there we go. Uh, so the uh, the data from the whoops uh, from the archaeological dig site was massively flooded in within about two days flat and done, which has got to be a record. Update the module transfer whilst offline. Oh, update for the module transfer whilst offline. It did restore your module, but deleted all your cargo. Ah. I imagine the, the, the customer support buyers could probably reimburse you for the difference. That's a shame. But yeah, it is a it is a pain in the backside when things like that happen, but there you go, there's some examples of some rocks and things. There you go. I do love my procedure energy. It's something I've been considering for a while actually, is I'd love to do a bit of a uh, um, a couple of little short videos on YouTube to explain some of the uh, the things about persistence and procedural generation and, uh, and all that business. If anyone would be interested in doing that, then please do. You know, kind of not not doing that. Interested in me doing that? Then uh, let me know. Send me some messages. See any ideas and suggestions for things like that you'd like to see. Right. Oh, interesting tip for those of you who do care. If you do get attacked on a surface base uh, by by a various like a ship of some description, then uh, just let them blow up your SRV because it's much better losing quarter of a million credit, uh, uh, better losing 112 credits or whatever your SRV is worth, rather than doing what I do and jumping did the last week, jumping back into my ship and having them blow up my ship. Yes. <coughs> Uh, Andy, I guess the software deficit. Yeah, I'd love to do a kind of a, a bit of a kind of a, a visual representation, some things like that, um, to describe some of the things like like we just discussed. The idea of persistence, procedural generation, the the layers of those things. Developer stream for the win. Can we start with COBOL? We 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 work with uh, you know work from the ground up. Start with the uh, assembly machine code from the raw <laughs> now <laughs> to do some, some interesting kind of visual, visual flow charts and things like that little five minute breakdowns of various elements would be a pretty cool thing definitely start with fortran oh my goodness yeah um, anyway back up to the uh, where we were uh, on the thing so the conflict is continuing in maya um yes the the community goal that i uh I took part in that, so yes, to deliver that stuff, which was, you know, interesting. I think yes, they ended up having a a chemical weapon attack on the on the uh, system and have shut down the uh, shut down the base. Oops, I feel rather responsible for that now. And it was a it was a fun hidden community goal. It was there. I just did it for the credits. Oops, four trans seventy seven. Oh yes, that's my favourite language, Prime. Prime, I love that language. Well, Malbolge is it, it. It. It's that's pretty interesting as well. But arguably, unless you want to start writing your own beam search uh, uh, <laughs> algorithms to invent code uh, for for Malbolge, then you're probably not going to stand it. Malbolge is is fascinating, but that one is that one is is going to the old uh, brain. <laughs> Interesting language. I love these esoteric languages because they really kind of teach you things like compiler theory and, and the the interesting mechanics behind how languages work and things like that, which is which is really cool. And arguably, I mean that that's a lot of what makes procedural generation interesting. Is it's almost like um, when you're when you're building the systems that that make procedural generation work, you're almost writing your own custom bespoke language to describe the 
the systems which will generate the data in effect, isn't it? These kind of like uh, node graphs that will create the various pieces of content you're trying to create. So it's almost like inventing your own language, so you have to build your own tools for describing that language and, and encoding that language in some way and things. It's, it's, it's fascinating. There, is, there are so many layers to it to make it happen. Um, <clears throat> to Al or Leet speak uh, your favorite abs absurd SSH. Like, is it lol speak? Uh, lol, lol code. Um, I can 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 has resource and uh, is instead of if. I like that. Is port open? <laughs> Brilliant. Um, save it for the YouTube channel. Yeah, I mean, I I I kind of only really use the YouTube channel for the. Uh, um, archiving the streams, but definitely doing a few five-minute videos. The problem I've had is breaking it up into short segments. Um, I've got a lot of ideas on the things in the topics that could be covered in, in things like that, um, but it's breaking it up into nice, you know, discrete chunks to describe those things, but uh, definitely do it. Convex hulls for the win! All that takes me back to the uh, uh, quake days of uh, visibility culling and all that interesting stuff. See, Prime, I love this stuff, Prime. I would love to sit, <laughs> sit and have a nice chat with you. We'll have to have you back on again, Prime, whenever you whenever you have chance. I know you've got a crazy busy schedule, but it would be lovely to have you back on as a guest again, and we can, we can talk about more crazy dev things. Um, Yes, yeah, so I think that's all the community goals this week. So I don't think the Maya ones are going to last very long, as as you guys have mentioned in the chat. But the commodity peel, I see this one being a long-term community goal. This one is going to take uh, a long time, I think, when you look at it, because these are rare materials. Uh, but definitely, but that would be my my tip of the stream. Look for the industrial thermware. Is it things like uh, uh, data points on? on planets and things like that. I think those industrial firmware ones are probably going to be the easiest ones to find. He says after finding a chemical manipulator this evening. Yeah, 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 we, I, know, I know that. Uh, Leet Speaker, there's an, an, an adaptation of uh, BrainFuck. Uh, each word you add up numbers, take that and mod, uh, mod eight and map it to one of the eight instructions. That's it, yeah. Yeah, so it's kind of almost random what instruction is going to execute. Does that also do the thing where there's a... Um, does, does that have a crazy instruction which kind of just randomly jumps you to a different memory space or something? Is that the one that has that weird instruction? I know one of them has something like that, like a, like a CR, CRZ mnemonic um, which does some weird random hop to a completely different memory space or something like that. Let's go and have a look at this high signal over here. There might be a data source over here, actually. Let's see if we can get some uh, industrial firmwares. <laughs> Don't drive across the surface of these planets at 80 mile an hour on rough terrain. You wouldn't do it in a 4x4. So don't do it in an SRV. Yeah, that's the thing. It's, um, I think there's a little bit of uh, uh, the reason why people complain about it. it's like, oh, like the SRV is uncontrollable, and it's like, right, 27 meters per second is damn fast, and I'm doing 27 meters per second over these really rough terrain, like, you know, if I was, you know, going 80, 90 mile an hour across terrain like this in another game, yeah, you wouldn't expect the vehicle to, uh, to handle particularly well. The fact that the SRV puts up with the abuse is pretty good, to be fair. Uh, oh, what's that point? There's other extensions that add instructions for fork. Spawn a new copy of this process. Most <laughs> insane. Twist. Swap program and data arrays. Oh my god! That's just hideous. And, oh, why would you torture yourself so? Uh, you didn't invent it, you just have a soft spot for it. stupid lines. I love esoteric languages like that. Like I said, it's, they're, they're just really interesting as to, you know, how. The things they teach you about how computers work. So, chemical manipulators are the easiest to get and find in anarchy systems. Yeah, true, actually, Shan, because I did that before when I was looking at it for engineering resources. Um, even though they're a rare resource and industrial firmware is technically a standard resource, unless 
prime it unless you have some hints on exactly who we're supposed to find these resources that seem to be... Oop. Oh, you son of a... Eh, might as well use the bonus. Completely run out of uh, ammo for the old uh, turret there. Didn't even notice. Shields offline. Where did that... Uh Incoming mission critical message. What have we got? Jade, I believe, go on there. Oh, skate pop. Do, 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 do. Whoop. I know it's probably not worth as much as Jade. I Jade is probably worth. Gold's probably worth more than that, to be honest, but. Hey. thing and pop a couple of... Oh, shields are back up. You have an open ticket for it. You've been to over 12 things. Oh, sorry, I missed what you said there. Uh, convoy bay... Convoy bacons are bugged in the, at the moment, are they? They don't all spawn ships. Damn it! Yeah, I've noticed some uh, really frustrating kind of... I don't know, behavior, I don't see behavior, but just the way that some of these things, are, like I said, like rare and standard commodities and materials and things like that, they don't seem to be quite as rare as you expect. And then the, you know, a, the typical, the a, also atypical way geckos and things like that, which seem to be very, very common. So they should be atypical. <laughs> Isn't it, Toad? That's how they should be. Um, I'm very bad at I just wrote an article about the death of von Neumann architecture. Ooh, millstone. Linky, linky, linky. I'd be very interested in reading that. Yeah, the whole um, von Neumann architecture. I mean, that's, if I recall, uh, kind of like the concept, like like uh, tiered memory storage and that kind of thing. Um, isn't it? And, it? and it is kind of going that way when you think about it. I mean, the SSDs, um, the non-volatile RAM is kind of approaching the same sort of speeds as, as, uh, um, as regular RAM and all that kind of stuff. So, you know, it's kind of that, that tiered data storage is kind of becoming... It, it. All of the different layers are kind of merging and slowly becoming one kind of blob, aren't they? One just chunk of data that you can access uh, and address directly, which is... Pretty interesting. <clears throat> ah, the chit system. Yes, I've heard about that one. The chit system. Who's von Neumann? Ah, oh, that is a a large topic. Again, I think that's an entirely different collection of YouTube videos I could write about the the history of computing in general and stuff like that. I've got some really interesting books on things like that. Actually, I love that kind of stuff. I I always used to skip over the the, the the history of computing and, and the computer science and stuff like that in, in school. It was used to bore me when I when I was at that age. And as I've got older and greyer, uh, I I find a lot of that interesting there to see where it all come from. Um, you remember when bubble memory was the new big thing? I I do remember reading about bubble memory. Yeah. I wouldn't say I know all of my stuff, Milsa. I do. I I do like to keep tabs on a lot on lots of little things. And I I promise I, I could turn the webcam around to prove I promise I haven't got Wikipedia open on the site and <laughs> randomly bringing stuff up. I I do take a keen interest in things like that. I, it's quite fun. I, I've I, I've played around. I've, I've dabbled in a few tools and technologies in the past. Uh, from, you're way too much of a newbie to go out. The oldest platform you've actually programmed for either the Xbox 360 or already into the Win32 era. Well, still there's a, a... It's 
a lot harder now with Prime 9 to, to kind of build on the systems we have today. I mean, it's... Oh, did I go... Oh, I point one of a light second away. <laughs> Turn around. Flying off into Super Cruise, not paying attention there. Um, yeah, I mean, back in the day, like, you know, the uh, uh, the Spectrum things, like the 8-bit eight, eight computers of the day and stuff like that, it was, it was not uncommon to be able to understand practically the entire stack, top to bottom. And I know I find it quite funny now when you you talk to people and they say, "Oh, I'm a, I'm a full stack developer." It's like, no, nah, no. Nah. It's like you, you have UI developers, you have database developers, you have your backend developers, you have your network developers, and it's so many different things. Because there's no way that any one human being could possibly know every aspect of every computer system these days. It's just, or, or even one single computer system. They are so complex. There's so many layers to it. Um, it, it just, it's just an impossible task these days. You have to specialise. I mean, I, I try and learn little bits about it. I'm kind of a an odd job bob. Uh, jack of all trades, master of none. <laughs> but better than a master of none, so I've learned is the next part of that, which not a lot of people do. Gaming with the... Um, farewell, Commander. We'll see you on your stream very shortly. Have a good evening, buddy. Oh, I've started. I've started the retro thing on the DLT tapes, the deck TK fifties, oh, punch cards. That's going way back. Stephen Usher, you still have nightmares about Sis Dollar QIO. I'm not familiar with that one. Is that from the Spark Systems? Taking a stab at that. The Xbox uh, from Prime and the Xbox 36 was so heavily optimized for vector operations that it could multiply two 4x4 matrices faster than two integers. Better for pipeline to the point that it functions. No, sorry about that. Sort of, not technically faster, but better pipeline to the point that it function functionally is right. Oh, yeah, okay, because the Xenon processor didn't it technically have three cores. And of course, you had you know, the vector processors. Are kind the more common now on the on the newer up to date. Um, uh, ooh, sh I'm trying to dock it as station a uh, place which isn't a thing. Um, yeah, the, uh, the the newer Intel processors kind of have the vector extension under the AVX extension. Oh, I, I I need to play around with more. I, I do love uh, tweaking my assembly. Optimizations you can do with that sort of stuff, the AVX2 extensions and stuff like. That. Kind of annoys me because the Intel come up with these really really cool features, and then it takes years for compiler developers to start to merge the things in as available functions in the compilers. So you have to kind of do hand coded assembly optimization uh, optimizations to take advantage of them. You haven't lived until you've had to fit code within 2K. You're glad. No. See, that's some of the. You've got to do it, Prime. You've got to. Go, have a look at something. It was um, po poet.net, I think it is. Let me see if I can find some links. Some of that stuff is some of the most awesome stuff you can do. Um, po poet. Is it Pouet? Pouet? It's French, I think. I'm going to give these guys a shout out because it's awesome. Yeah, there we go. Head to some of these things. There's some Win32 uh, assemblies you can get and having to screw around with memory space allocation and stuff like that and writing your own custom linkers and all that kind of stuff. Completely throwing all the usual tools out of the out of the bag and having to write your own um, <clears throat> your own stuff from, from scratch um, in order to squeeze in a demo into 32K. I love that stuff. It's absolutely awesome. Bookmark that link. Have a look at some of the stuff that things are do that they, those guys do. It's really, really awesome. Demo scene. Oh, you've seen them, have you? I thought you would have the demo scene stuff. I, I, they are fun to write. Seriously, I, I've written a couple of silly little things in the pan. Nothing it, anywhere near the quality of what some of these guys do. And um, there are some great things. One of my favourite one, I think, is Lattice Two Five Six, uh, a two hundred and fifty six byte. Demo. See, I'm, I'm totally geeking out there rather than playing Elite. <laughs> um, a 256 byte demo with a 3D, uh, I think it's a um, path tracer uh, into a, a volumetric lattice kind of centre around, and it even appears to have the effect of lighting stuff. Absolutely awesome. I love that stuff. Some really, really cool optimizations to get the effect. What's that there? Andy Pipkin? You got. Let's see if we can get that link up for you. An awesome neutron star. Oh, the neutron star. Sorry. Yes, let me. Let me get that from the newsletter because I'm 
I am waffling about geeky stuff. I love my geeky stuff. Skip down to the newsletter because we're going up to 10, 10 to, and we haven't gone over this part of the newsletter. Is that animated? Yes, it is animated. Just try and get this full screen for everyone so it's a little bit. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and put that in the background whilst we uh, we geek out. Oh, certain death! I'll wait for that to restart. We'll come back to that. You just woke up, DJ. <laughs> Greetings, Commander. Um, so I, I, I don't know that. Does Toad know the answer? Then? Passenger rewards. Uh, sorry, I must have assumed I should say is the the I/O system core on v, VMS. Uh, 15 parameters were chained depending on the various parameters. Manual selection for the system called was contained within two thick ring pen manuals. Oh, I do remember some pretty hideous reference. Some some of the scariest things I've sat in um, and tried to go through. I think the the Intel uh, instruction set guide for the for the latest x86 64 architecture. Oh my god! Like nine volumes of it, and the things you do, and it's like. So being a compiler uh, developer these days, not a job I would I would want to endure. <clears throat> yes, Millstone. Yeah, it's a fantastic graph. I think the uh, the guys at Lave Radio first tweeted this uh, sometime last week. Um, it is it is kind of frightening. Yes, absolutely. Uh, I think there's a there's a version you can get so you can pause it in the link there to go through it. But it's a nice little infographic, something to have. Uh, and you know to kind of advise on how to do it, but definitely you want to kind of you know aim for that middle section of the of the cone you can see there, the the, 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 the middle section there, and aim to come out. So kind of swoop in and out of the larger thing. Don't go too fast. Don't go too slow. Keep it in the blue. I haven't dared try it. I've done it a couple of times. You've probably seen me do it. Yeah, it can it can be hairy. Yeah, do that. That aim for the middle. Um, yeah, like, do not do it from this position. That's the certain death region there. Don't go there yet. I don't know what the fuss is about. <laughs> They're fine, aren't they, Toad? Yeah. They're fine. Uh, the record to Jackson. I'm not aware of that, actually, DJ. Is it someone managed to do it in four hours by doing the neutron the neutron hop? Do the neutron hop. <laughs> Tickle your FST till it explodes. <laughs> Don't stay in the FSD after it's supercharged. Yeah. Yeah, that's exactly what I did. If you end up in the death zone in normal space, you are screwed. You are not going to be able to reactivate your FSD to get out of it. Scary, scary, scary. Yeah. Interesting comms chat. Right, let's see if we can get a few more things. I need to find myself some skimmers. And I think I mentioned this last week, actually, or the week before, when I was doing a couple of these missions here. Uh, if you have a base which doesn't spawn skimmers, don't go in there and sh pop at things randomly. Have a look around for nearby uh, signals, trying to identify if there's, uh, <coughs> you know, like a, uh, a little cache of cargo, or something like that. Because those will be the mission targets. Do those. Yeah, I'm pretty sure you did, didn't you, Toad? Because you, you were already in a region uh, in beta of neutron stars, and you got a ridiculously like 200 like your hop or something way before anyone else did. Let's look for a couple of signal sources when we do that. And some other guy went way above the galactic plane. Yes, uh, Shan, you went way above the galactic plane, didn't you? You went up to that. Ah, uh, oh, what was the name of the system you gave me? It's it's impossible to return because you have to jump outside of your range, don't you, to get there? Ooh. Listen, listening for the. Oh, I can see a flash of something which might be a high signal over there. 
an artificial signal, I should say. DJ, yes, we did go over the new weapon colours. Unfortunately, you can't get weapon colours. Oh, I think... Ah! Can you put weapon... You might... I didn't try it. Uh, the weapon colour modification shows up under the livery tab in the outfitting for anyone who, who is interested in looking around in it. Um, and you can select your ship, your fighter, and the SRV from the livery tab, so I don't know whether or not you can uh, apply it to the SRV weapon. I'd be intrigued to find out. That would be quite fun. And does it... Uh, oh, what have we got here? Is that... A, looks like a... Me, phosphorus, tin. None of these I'm particularly going to got restock. Phosphorus is handy for that. Which I will need to do iron and nickel. Yeah, I'll get the phosphorus. Get the nickel as well. Thank you all. Come again. You don't have to collect everything. You don't have to vacuum it all up and be greedy and then complain about not having enough material storage on your uh, commander. Uh, you should be able to do it. It's something which is technically possible but may have been limited by, on the art side. I will give that a try, Prime 9. Yeah, definitely. Oh, 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 there we go. We got some artificial signal popping up there. Let's go and have a look. Yeah, again, it's that thing that people don't appreciate is the fact that so many things have to fall in place to make it possible. You can't just apply it to everything in fingers crossed, copied paste. <laughs> Someone somewhere has to change the plasma repeater on the turret to make sure that it can emit the right colour light and uh, there isn't a mix-up on the way that the hue is mapped to the, uh, the particle maps and things like that. Dietrich! Greetings, Commando! Uh, Shan, yeah, I was thinking that was the first thing I saw when I saw the weapon modification. It was like, oh, I could have a, a red laser and a green laser and a blue laser and I could fire them all independently at these turrets going different colours everywhere and then it's kind of like, oh, I can't do that. And then again, there's no real reason to do it. Oh no, I'm getting that weird effect where the high signal sources are not showing up properly. Meh, and not fair. Oh, that's annoying. Yeah, that's something I've seen a couple of other people report on as well, actually, which is kind of frustrating. It's like a spawn error. But, uh, you're looking for a particular source, and then when you get right on top of it, it doesn't actually pop up. A weird bug. I'm not sure how you would trace that down, because it seems a little intermittent. Those really, really annoying ones. I imagine Prime is probably gritting his teeth right now. <laughs> Sorry, mate. You think really is that you think that's a good thing for the PvP players, DJ? Is the fact that they can disguise what their builds are by changing the colours. That's an interesting angle to it, I suppose. It was, again, it's one of those things, isn't it? It's like kind of like an unforeseen consequence of a, a, a what seems like a relatively innocuous change from the outset. Uh, when you actually get into the ear, it's like, ah, oh, crap, people can exploit it this way. Can we have crazy string firing repeaters? <laughs> we need that. We need that in time for New Year's. <laughs> cover each other in crazy string. That would be a fun particle effect to program, no doubt. Dimmer, what cannot connect some matchmaking server? So is that possibly your end? There's a lot of effects it can have. I mean, I, I know there's a lot of like DNS. I've seen a lot of things like that where people complain about things and there tends to be uh, DNS problems at, at uh, the individual's end, Dimmerwit. So it, might be a pain, pain in the back, bouncing your router sometimes. I've had things sometimes if I bounce my router, suddenly I get no issues for like five days solid. 
I blame my ISP. They break a lot of things. A lot of ISPs filter peer-to-peer -peer traffic as well, which kind of screws with the way the Elite works. Salvaged alloys, anything interesting here? Jadeite, Taphite? Taphite's pretty tasty. Let's have some of that. My cargo's gonna be full now, isn't it? Because I've got a Occupied Escape Pod. No, I put it back in my ship, didn't I? Whee! Have I completed that now? Let's check. Maybe it is over there. I don't want to go back that way then. DJ, it's a valid concern, not a discussion you want. It's worth pointing out that special effects are still distinguishable by the additional texture overlay within the beam. Yeah, it's not over written by the color shift. Yeah, so like the um, the the heating beam, you get that kind of like wobbly uh, effect added over the top, don't you? Uh, yeah, is, uh, oh, I need to get out of this thing here. It's going to constantly pop up on my scanner. Over here, let's head this way. It's not totally run, you can still distinguish them, yeah. I haven't noticed many of those effects myself yet, but uh, I tend to stay away from PvP because I suck at it. Contrary to popular opinion. Snoz! Uh, going back to the old stuff, it was really lucky to be around during the very vibrant phase of computer availability in the early 90s. Yeah, loads and loads of PC clones, loads of workstations. MIPS, SG Next, oh yeah, I remember those. Particularly uh, lusted after the SG Indica. A thing of beauty, yeah. I'd, God, there were some fantastic machines back in the, the Amiga days. There were some fantastic... Uh, kind of, I, I think it was just kind of like that, that... Because it wasn't such a monopoly, there was a, a lot more kind of uh, variation and... and, and Challenge, you know, a lot, of, a lot of companies were challenging each other to come up with new and more esoteric designs for things like that. So you got some really, really interesting uh, computer architectures and things back in the day. It was really fun. It's hard to see, but the three visual sex special was a color shift, different beam texture, and a different impact effect. Yeah, I've noticed that about different particles emit from the uh, point of impact and stuff as well, yeah. I have noticed the, ch the changes in the way the ESRV works as well as the uh, the engine capacitor now it appears to have more of an effect on the uh, the speed when you take all power of engines. You notice how I, I completely lose the top end. If full whack acceleration, it's completely. Uh, and I put it back in. Whoom, it goes a lot faster again. So it's not just the thruster power; it affects and also uh, kicks off the the engines as well. Which is how, arguably, it probably should have been like that from day one. But it's definitely noticeable in 2.2 now. Oh, so, oh, I see DJ. Was, yeah, you just noticed it when you looked at some of the jewels on there. Yeah, it's not that I, I, it's not that I dislike PvP. It's just I suck at it. So I wouldn't enjoy it. I would be an easy kill, an easy target, and nobody wants to play a game that they're just going to suck at left, right, and centre. Um, and a lot of that reason is just because of the way that PvP in the main game works. Is you, you kind of have to have a ship with an equivalent. Uh, kind of loadout which is going to give you a fair ch uh, fair chance of survival and you have to know how to use it. And the only way you can do that is, is practice so anyone who's uh, been PvPing from the start and keeps up with all of the changes in uh, uh, the various mechanics in the game which, which drive PvP they're, they're gonna have a significant advantage over someone who kind of dips in and out of gameplay and tries different things which is much more my style of play is to just kind of do a little bit of this, a little bit of that. So, PvP, I just 
I'm not going to be very good at it. Is there a copper over there having a sleep? Yeah. He's eating his donuts, I think. Let's go and have a look. What is it? It's a python. Nice to have a poke around a python. Mm. MIPS processors are embedded processors now. Oh, I remember the day when MIPS processors were all the rage. Oh, I don't want that. I want refuel. That hurt. 66%. Oops. Sorry, officer. Moving right along. What have we got? Any more high si Oh, actually, have I got any more to do? Yeah, I've got a couple more to do. Let's see if we can find a few more. Let me get out of this rough patch. So you don't suck it for future. Well, yeah, yeah okay, yeah. To, just, just to go back to that, DJ. Yeah, I think to, to cover it a little bit more. In CQC, uh, it's definitely a lot easier to PvP. You can dive in and out of it without having to worry about the challenge. Things like exactly like that, like min-maxing your loadout and, and understanding the resistances and in the math and stuff like that. Again, it's a it's a it's a completely different aspect of the game, which is very difficult to get into unless you've got the time to commit to it. Um, so unfortunately, I can't. I can't really get into it as much as I'd like to. But definitely, CQC is a nice, easy way of doing doing PvP without the uh, without all the hard work. Which is why I enjoy it really. I can get the uh, thing. And I, yeah, I wouldn't say I suck at that. I think I'm kind of average at least. I can I can hold my own in a bit of CQC. Uh, Prop nine. Yeah, resistance is one area you keep poking around to be added in the in cockpit UI. Both yours and an approximation of your targets. Uh, UI team have higher priority fish, though. Yeah, again, another one of those things that people don't consider when they look at things like that is that there's so many layers of it, so many people that have to get, put work in to make it a uh, an interesting, and usable game mechanic, you know. But uh, but you know the the base layer is in there, isn't it? You know, you've got the resistances coded in, you've got the um, uh, the ship effects, the weapon effects, all that stuff, it's in there. It, c it can be layered in over time, given enough uh, development resource and uh, and time. Again, priorities, priorities, priorities. And DJ, uh, as much as it would be nice to see things like that happen, again, it's, it's, it's those things of prioritizing it for the majority of the user base. Everyone always wants their one pet feature to be the uh, the next thing which added in, and you saw that. I mean, that was very much the case in the in the Planet Coaster streams. Actually, there were some fantastic things announced that nobody were expecting to be added into the game, and they were all just like constantly hitting the mark, like water rides, river rapids, log flumes, wooden coasters, all of these really really cool things added in. Uh, you know, triggered events, and everyone's like, yes, yes, yes. So many things, and then you just see one guy in the chat. It's like, what about go karts? <laughs> You know, everyone has a different perspective of priority. And I wouldn't like to be a producer, because it's a nightmare. Mm. Oh, so, oh, angry Welsh gamer! Dark Winter Dreams, not a geek fleet invasion. Anna says, hi. oh, hi to Anna. Oh, I, I, I do miss having a chat with Anna. I'm really going to have to get her on as a guest sometime when she has time. It'd be lovely to have a chat with Anna again. I hope her streams are going well. Geek Girly Gamer, if you don't follow Geek Girly Gamer, I imagine one, if one of you guys has just pop, popped over from her stream, actually, if you can put her, the, the link to her t Twitch channel in. Um, she's a fantastic streamer. I'd recommend anyone here to to give her a follow. Uh, so, Jester, that you thought the chat would melt down when all the new features are now. It, it, it did. I mean, it went nuts. Um, at some point during the chat, we we had the live Google Analytics going on the chat as the Planet Coaster features were being announced, and we hit something. And I'm not even over exaggerating here. It was in the region of 1,300 messages a minute uh, in the chat, uh, and I and we had 
somewhere in the region of, of well, I think it was over 3,000 simultaneous, three and a half thousand, maybe even higher simultaneous viewers and things. It was absolutely nuts. I, I could not moderate the chat. <laughs> it was it was crazy. But it was lovely to see the guys getting so much love in the chat for the hard work they've been putting into Planet Coaster because they really have been, uh, you know, pulling out all the stops, working all kinds of crazy shifts to get it done. Stephen Ash has said, no toffee apple stall in Planet Coaster. Floats! Uninstall! Rage quit! Refund! Yeah, exactly. You know, there's, there's, there's still more things to come. I know the, the balloon store, for one thing, is, is coming next week at launch as well, and that's not in the beta, you know. So there are more hidden things. And of course the guys are going to continuously uh, support updates and various patches and, and, and things in the future as well, and in uh, and versions as they continue to... Uh, Build on the game, just like just like what they do with Elite. Various uh, free and paid DLC, I imagine, will be available over over time. <clears throat> Modus greetings. Anna Banana Gaming Cabana. <laughs> Redirects to our channel. <laughs> Hannahgeeks.com. Thank you. That's it. Ang Angry Welsh. Yeah. I, I should have some. Uh, Twitch bot set up with commands so that I can do things like that, shouldn't I? But thank you, thank you. Chester, yeah, I know. I, I, we didn't want to spoil the surprise on the water ride things, because obviously everyone's been asking for water rides, I think, since the very beginning. And you could see that Sam Denny desperately wanted to announce that water rides were going to be a thing. It's like, you know, you wanted to tell everyone. He's been wanting to tell everyone for months. Um, and it was like, we, you know, it's like, we appreciate the enthusiasm, but guys, just, you know, spamming it is not going to make it appear, you know. Boom! What have we got? Synthetic Jadeite? Jadeite might be good. Some Jadeite. Taff Taffodite, that's the stuff. Taffy, 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 whatever it's called. Digga, 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 Taffyite. Yes, I will have some of that. Yoink. I'm gonna call the ship back in because I think I am done with this mission. Oops, I was meant to do that. I am done with that mission. Uh, you just finished the storm flight because you're just starting thinking, do you need to sleep? I oh, don't need to sleep tonight, Brian. What do you need to sleep for? Sleep is for the week. <laughs> Cider tech in Elite Dangerous. I know, DJ, I know. It was it's there. The guys have got it. Third person cam, you know. First person cam, all that business, it's there. It's there. <laughs> so I think on that note, unfortunately, I think we do have to wrap it up for this evening. We've covered everything in the newsletter. Newsletter 150. Uh, I'm afraid you're gonna have to read newsletter 151 yourself next week because um I've got to be a fantastic on. Yes, fantastic on for the win. Uh, yes, it's going to be absolutely awesome. So I can't wait to see all of you, all of you folks. Now I know a lot of you are going to be at Fantastic Con in, in Hull next week. Um, I think tickets are available on the door. So if you can get to Hull next Saturday and Sunday, then uh, pop along, say hi to us. It'd be great to that. I'm going to be with the the entire Crashling family is going to be uh, coming along with me. So uh, it's going to be great fun. So uh, it's good night to you all in the chat. Thank you very much for tuning in. Lovely to have you here as always. And uh, until next time, Commanders, see you in the void.